I thought going into this, if I could just get a check and, squ and squeeze by, that would be great. But. All right, hey guys, Michael and Dano here with a little something different for this year. Uh, Dano's, uh, Dano's business, advancedangler.com, um, and all the, the media tracking and media work that, that he's done for years has opened up a little opportunity for him this year to get out on the road, and I know he's hitting a bunch of the pro tournaments. I think all, pretty much all the elite elite tournaments. Is that right? Yeah, all the elites and uh, a few of the MLF Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuits and a few of the MLF Bass Pro Tour events as well, Michael. Yeah, we're going to be hitting some of those. We may even, if one crosses our path in timing, uh, we may try to hit one of those national, those NPFLs too, oh, nice. just to see how that goes. Well, so we're always uh, willing and happy to try some new and different stuff. So what we thought would be fun here with Bucks Island uh, is to bring you guys uh, some of the, the tips and insights and kind of the, the, uh, the, the latest and greatest from Dano's uh, being there on the ground um, and getting to talk with these guys. And so we're trying this out. This is our inaugural uh I don't know. We'll have to come up with a name. I'm sure something will come out, but uh, we'll call it a tournament update for the week. Um, yeah, Bucks Island on tour or something, you know, something that we're doing there, uh, but you'll figure it out. Uh, I'm going to not do a whole lot of talking because, as you know, I'm, I'm not the big fisherman here. Um, I haven't been there, but... Uh, Dano, so you started out, this was your first uh, first weekend on the road. Where have you been? What you been up to? We were in Jasper, Texas, uh, Sam Rayburn uh, Reservoir, um, for the uh, Major League Fishing uh, Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit uh, at Lake Sam Rayburn. Um, we had uh, one of our pro staffers, Brian Latimer, in the tournament. 158 boats is what it is. Uh, basic recap of the event, uh, condition-wise, it was um, cold in the mornings. Uh, the bite at Rayburn hadn't been great, but it did warm up some as the week went on, uh, with the exception of day two. Of course, that's when the conditions started to change a little bit, so it brought a lot of heavy wind, and they did cancel day two of the event. So it became went from a four-day tournament to a three-day tournament. So full field fished on day one, full field fished on day three. Then they cut to the top 10 uh, for the final day. Um, but overall, what we were looking at was um, a finesse type deal. Now, Sam Rayburn, you think Gunnersville gets a ton of pressure? They were estimating that on Saturday, day three of that tournament, that there were going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 different tournament boats on the water, maybe more. Wow. Uh, there was yeah, 158 boats for the pro circuit event. Uh, and then there was uh, another tournament that was somewhere in the 250 to 300 range. And then another one that was in the 300 plus range, two separate tournaments. And that's not even counting what may have been the small tournaments on the water, but well, a they, tremendous amount of pressure. Just crazy. They, they do. They do say everything's bigger in Texas. So <laughs> yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's first, let's talk about why they shut down. Uh, they were talking on day two, why they canceled day two and, and they, they made the right call. Uh, Daniel Fennell, the tournament director from, uh, the pro circuit there, he made the right call. Here's the reason. Um, it was only 10 to 15 mile an hour winds, but you were seeing gusts 25 to 30. We could feel it in our camper, you know, three miles, four miles away from the lake. And we were surrounded by trees. It was north northwest winds, which blows straight down the lake. And Sam Rayburn, uh, they cut boat lanes. They didn't cut the timber out of the lake. So you can't run to a shore and get out of the wind to be able to run. You just got to run the boat lanes. That's a big reason why a lot of people in Texas, all they buy is 21 foot bass boats because. When they're running, they're going to be in the boat lanes. You can't get out of the boat lanes because you, you're hitting timber. Hmm. So uh, they made the right call. That, th that wind was blowing straight down. Uh, Ed, the, the director of our campground, was telling us that uh, you could see six to seven footers out there on the main, main lake, and they made the right call. Hmm. Um, it did make for an interesting tournament. 
tournament started early with finesse type things and as it warmed up and the conditions got a little bit better now we started seeing some reaction baits um happening uh but that's kind of the overall picture of the whole event uh we were able to talk to you know several of the leaders each day um and find out what they were doing um so all right um so so uh what uh what were they biting on you got details got the skinny well let's let's start with uh with our pro staffer and our friend brian latimer uh which didn't I, have I, I, will, I will throw out there before you get into it just uh we were talking we he was actually on a tech tuesday with us earlier talking about a motor swap on his bay boat and uh, he said it publicly so i can say it publicly as well uh i think he's treating this tournament like a warm-up uh, he was not very pleased, so I'm, I'm looking forward. To, I know we'll do a tournament recap video, but uh, so so what what were the results from him? Well, uh, Brian finished 109th place, um, and and you know obviously he fished two days, but he finished 109th day one. He had 10:05, which was kind of about average for the tournament, uh, middle of the pack kind of a thing. But then he slipped off on day two to 7:02. Um, which left him with 1707, uh, didn't have a full 10 fish limit. He had four fish on the final day. And that's kind of what it was, was you caught them or you didn't. Mm. And, uh, you know, a friend of ours that comes to the shop quite frequently, Billy Hines, he had 10 pounds on day two, but he only was able to get three fish on day one. So he finished further down in the pack um, and didn't, uh, didn't really didn't really have a good tournament himself so let's let's kind of look at overall um what we heard from from a lot of the anglers was uh drop shotting was a big deal um we heard from some of the guys in the top 10 that in the first couple of days of the tournament they were fishing brush piles out off of points and deeper stuff and ended up uh drop shotting and nico rigging uh out of out of the deeper brush um and then in the afternoon, they would roll into a bladed jig, a you know a jackhammer or a thunder cricket or something like that. Um, we heard a lot of reds, which you know a lot of these crankbaits and lipless crankbaits and stuff. You hear Rayburn red is a color. Hmm. That's why uh, they they eat reds at Rayburn. Uh, of course, we're finding out that it works uh, elsewhere around the country, Gunnersville and Neely Henry and stuff like that. Some of those lakes have been really turned on to eating that that uh, fire red color, uh, yeah. delta red, some of those kinds of things. But Rayburn Red is where that kicked off. I believe one of the guys from the uh, Coos River Team Trail that was in here this past weekend was uh, a little frustrated that uh, I, I think people scarfed up a lot of those uh, those jackhammers. So, um, But, you know, I mean, we're trying to get inventory in as quick as we can. Yeah, we've had standing orders in with Z-Man on, on the jackhammers and – they just kind of come trickling in. It's it's a very popular bait. Um, this time of the year, myself, um, I like to throw the thunder cricket. It's 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 very similar to the. You got a flat side square bill this time of the year. It's got a real tight wiggle to it versus the regular square bill that's got a wider wobble. The thunder cricket in the colder weather, I tend to kind of like that red color, that 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 tighter wiggle just a little bit. And I can accentuate the wiggle with a blade, a blade minnow, or uh, a menace grub, or something like that. I can make, I can change that, or a paddle tail. Um, and and anyway, but so if you can't get them on the jackhammer, you can't get the red jackhammers. Look at the uh, look at the the thunder crickets. You might be able to find what you're looking at there. Or we've also got that Talon lures uh, bladed jig there as well, and that one might give you something as well. All right, um, but. That was the deal. Um, Carolina rig were, was a big key. Um, guys were throwing uh, lizards and finesse worms on those. Um, we talked to Bill McDonald, a Bass Cat Pro, uh, and he was throwing a Carolina rig out deep and planning on throwing the Thunder Cricket in the afternoon. Again, he didn't have a great tournament himself. Um, I think a lot of it ended up with boat pressure from talking to him off camera. Um, a lot of boats, you'd pull up to your area and with 700 some odd boats on the water, you couldn't, you know, where can I fit? Um, yeah, they, uh, 
he thought he was going to catch him on a bladed jig, a thunder cricket up, up river. And he ended up having to throw a Carolina rig shallow too. So, um, Carolina rigs and the drop shot rig and a Nico rig deep in brush. And then in the afternoon, and what I know won the, the biggest weight with the uh, Michael Neal was a jerk bait in the afternoon. Um, on the final day, right. they zeroed their weight for the final day. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, so it made for an interesting thing. Neil was leading it after day two, um, and he had done the finesse thing. And late in the day on finesse on on day two, he pulled out a jerk bait and caught a big one. Um, well, he went jerk bait fishing all the, the last of the day, with the exception of one of his one of his fish that he caught late in the day on a drop shot rig, or I believe is what he said. Uh, anyway, but uh, I guess maybe I'll just let Michael tell you because don't we have a yeah, yeah. Well, we, uh, well, you, I know you had a chance to to grab him after after he won, filled with adrenaline. So uh, here you go. Here's that interview, guys. Michael Neal, man, you just won the first Tackle Warehouse Pro Circuit event of the year. That's a giant weight on a tough tournament. Uh, overall, what was your program? What was your pattern for this this week? I came into this. I was just going to fish offshore. I never went to the bank, and I had heard from everybody that there wasn't very much grass in the lake, so I just totally avoided that. I never made a cast of grass. Just fished offshore. Um, I fished everything from drains to individual brush piles to uh, just single stumps. And Active Target played a big role for me this week, just trolling around and finding those isolated targets. Once I found an area that I knew had some fish in it, I would really pick it apart with that and just cover the water really effectively, knowing I'm making that perfect cast every time. What were the actual uh, techniques that you used for the week? The first day I caught everything on a spinning rod on a drop shot, you know, just a 3 8 weight, uh, 10 pound sun line, and I actually caught a 7 and a 5, which was totally unexpected for that. I thought going into this, if I could just get a check and, squ- and squeeze by, that would be great. But uh, the day one kind of put me put me at ease a little bit. I knew that I was around the fish. I knew that that's where they were, was in those drains relating to them. And then yesterday, uh, of course, we had the day canceled, but yesterday I feel figured out later in the day that the bigger fish seemed like they had moved up on top of the drops, whether it was in the in the back of a drain where it flattened out or just up on the sides on some piece of cover. And I totally abandoned the deep stuff today. Um, as far as the spinning rod stuff, I may be through it for 10 minutes, but all those bigger fish today were up, up shallow. And what did you catch those fish on? I caught all of them today on the jerk bait. Uh, jerk bait? The deep diving jerk deep bait. Diving yeah, bait. I mean, I, I threw three different ones. So I, I threw one on a 14-pound sun line that wouldn't go but two feet because I had a shallow brush pile. I actually caught a five pounder on it today. Um, caught another, uh, threw another one on 10 pound uh, sunline as well. And then just uh, a spro stick mixed in here and there. Thanks for the time, man. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. So he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't give it up the, uh... well, so standard deal with pro anglers is, is if they're throwing a sponsor product, they name it. If they, if they're, if the sponsor product's not working, they're going to say a jerk bait. Um, I know most here's of the sponsors a, want, to, want them to win above all else. So, yeah, and that's the truth because he is using some sponsor product. He did catch a couple of fish on his Spro McStick, which is a Mike McClellan signature jerk bait, which is a great jerk bait, and we have them in the loft. Um, but most of the time, if an angler doesn't want to mention a specific jerk bait, He's probably throwing a mega bass, a mega bass plus one, or mega bass, you know, junior plus one, you know, that kind of stuff. One ten plus one junior, um, and we do have those upstairs as well in the loft. Um, the McStick's a great jerk bait, a little bit more cost effective from Spro. Uh, the, the the mega bass, and we've got also got the the Strike King KVD jerk baits, which are all going to be that. Uh, you know, slashing type, you know, stick baits. Um, gotcha. But those were the patterns, drop shot, Carolina rigs, Nico rigs, um, jerk baits, and a thunder cricket here and there. All right. uh, lipless crankbaits caught a few fish too. Well, I guess it's uh, also worth mentioning uh, a little success from uh, Tracy Robinson uh, here locally, right? Yes, uh, Gunnersville second place in the BFL. Uh, almost 22 pounds. Uh, he sent me some pictures. Um, it, uh, which I think I sent to you to be able to post yeah. on social media. 
Tracy's an absolute stick, and and there's just the fact that he finished second doesn't surprise me. The fact that he didn't finish first means he got beat, uh, which you know that guy earned it. Uh, but don't know what Tracy was doing. Couldn't give you guys any any tips there, but maybe Tracy will share a little bit with you somewhere. Well, we'll uh, we'll see. I know if if anybody's been following Bucks Island and uh, what we've. So the conversations we've had with Tracy, if you haven't figured out that guy that knows how to catch him around here, I know he's uh, he's spreading his wings a little bit and uh, venturing out a little bit more this year and excited to see uh, see what, what kind of success he has. So, yep. Well, yep. Uh, I guess uh, is that, that about wraps up for, for everything for this week that we got going on. Is that uh, yep. anything else to report? No, next uh, next week will be a couple days at the Bass Pro Tour. Um, I'll try to get a little sense of what we're doing at those couple of days. We're just going to be there getting some pictures and some some stuff that we can use there. And then we're on to Florida for uh, the opening of the Elite Series. Uh, and obviously, we'll be at all four days of each one of those events this year, so we'll be able to give you full wrap-ups on that. But I'll, I'll reach out to whoever wins, uh, uh, be able to get you some information on the Bass Pro Tour as well. So by this time next week we should be able to give you another wrap up talking about bass pro tour and some of those some of those uh, legends that are fishing over there well well guys uh i hope uh you you've enjoyed um if you're uh if you're a fish head and uh love following the tournament scene if you're new angler hopefully you learn a little something of course uh you know things translate between bodies of water um but uh We'll, we'll try and get Tracy's uh, what 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 Tracy was doing. Uh, maybe we can get some information for the fishing report this uh, this coming weekend. Um, but uh, check out. I'm gonna try and link up a lot of this tackle down in the uh, the descriptions, uh, whether on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, try to make it easy for you guys to to find it. Um, and uh, if not, message us. See if we've got some alternatives on some other stuff. But Dan, I hope you guys are having fun on the road. Um, I, I think, uh, it sounds like a fun adventure getting away from the kids for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's work, you know, but it's enjoyable work. I'm, I'm with my best friend and my wife and the, the two dogs. So, um, we miss everybody at home. We miss the Bucks Island folks. Uh, but, uh, we're going to try to help, help our customers and our friends figure out a little bit more that maybe they can do to be able to catch a few more fish and be able to enjoy, uh, this right along with us. So. Guys, let us know what you you know what you think, um, and uh, would love to have input on this kind of fun little conversation. And uh, we'll more more to come. So Dan, be be safe out there. And guys, uh, thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you on the next one. Sounds good. <laughs>